Good evening and welcome back to Frame of Midlife. It's Sunday evening and this evening we are talking loneliness. Um, the reason we're talking about that is basically because the headline caught my eye in one of the media reports I was reading today. Um, but if you've been watching this channel, channel for a while, you will know that I intend moving. Um, and the reason I intend doing that is because of where my parents lived. And my parents lived just slightly less than three miles out of the town. Now, I know it was slightly less than three miles by about 100 yards because I was not far enough away from the school to be entitled to a free school bus because anything under three miles you were allowed to walk. You know, they thought it was perfectly acceptable for you to walk. Really, rather stressful walking in the dark and the rain, etc, etc. But, you know, seemingly that was the rules. So I know that their property was three miles almost to the dot from the centre of the town. Now, that three miles, when they got older and less able to do things, was a huge, huge thing. Um, the fact that my mum was never a, what she called a joiner. She never joined in with anything. She, she always was so self-conscious of what people would think of her, what people would think of us, um, that she never, ever put herself out there. Um, she was horrified at the thought that I would stand up and speak as I used to do solo singing when I was at school. I joined committees when I was younger. Um, I joined the community council when I was younger. And my mother was horrified that I would put myself up front and centre. So when they retired, it was all very good for them going out, out and about, days out here and there. But gradually, as mum stopped driving, she didn't go anywhere. And she expected all her friends to come and see her. Which it took until a really, really good friend of hers said, um, no, you know, I'm making all the effort. You're doing nothing here. And I was quite shocked, but I, I completely understood where she was coming from because my mum basically sat and held court. Then, at that time, you know, Dad was still driving. He was going out and seeing friends and stuff, but Mum wasn't. So Mum sat in the house for years because she stopped driving. So she couldn't go anywhere. And then Dad got too unwell to drive. So the two of them were literally housebound three miles from the nearest shop. And they weren't friendly with the neighbours. The neighbours were, it was like a detached house with quite a big garden. So, you know, the neighbours were quite a distance away and they'd changed over the years as people had moved on. And there was no one for mum and dad to speak to apart from Kathleen and I. I mean, I went up, it was part of, in my job interview, this is one of the reasons that I have the best boss ever in the world. It was like, you've got half an hour for lunch. I said, I need slightly more than that. I have to go and see my parents every lunch hour. And he was like, okay, we can do that. So I was up there every single day at lunch. And now that I'm getting older, I'm quite conscious of, I have one it's a very small supermarket locally, but I would still need to get on a bus to get to it. And as I get older, I want to be sure that I don't have to be beholden to anyone I want to be able to walk out my door and go to the shops. But also, I don't want to be on my own. And I don't mean that like my mother did with the, you know, you should move in with me. I mean that I want to be out and about. I want to be joining groups. I want to be speaking to people. I want to still be doing this channel. I mean, I love this channel. It has helped me so much um, since I started it. I love speaking to you all. I love interacting with you all. And I think it's a great thing because it's not, well, it is a lot of me just talking what I'm telling you what I'm doing. But it's also feeding back you telling me what you're doing and other people feeding back. You know, we're having conversations here. And all right, it's on a computer. 
but you know it just makes such a difference now i wrote down some of the stuff that they'd said in this thing um and seemingly it's uh the loneliness is classed as a mismatch between the quantity and quality of the social relationships we have and those we want and you're like okay it's a whole lot of words but um there's also a thing um, if you're in the UK, Age UK have a Silver Line helpline for over 55s. And it's basically a chat line. You phone up and you can chat to people and interact. So that's quite useful. I will put the number in the comments or in the description below. But this whole thing that they did, this whole survey, it said to try and alleviate the loneliness. So, I mean, I'm doing not bad at the moment i've got kathleen i've got patrick and by extension so have you you know we laugh about what Ka kathleen's been doing i was just about to actually when i was putting this video up say please excuse the noise the rather huge puppy is having the zoomies back and forward there but she sat down at my feet thankfully because she's quite a large puppy that was quite hefty sound effects mm -hmm. um so yeah, but what they suggest is to keep yourself busy, to stimulate your mind, and by stimulating your mind, they're talking about, you know, listening to podcasts, listening to audiobooks, interacting with YouTube channels. Um, Keep moving. Say hello to people. Now, I know that when I was in London, I remember sitting in the doctor's surgery, waiting on Patrick, he had an appointment, so I was sitting in the waiting room. And there was a girl sitting there and she was desperately looking around and I couldn't work at anything. And then I realised she was looking for somewhere to plug in her phone. This was still in the days of your phone died really quickly. And I was like, oh, the socket's over there. And she's like, oh, thank you so much. And by the time there was, you know, two women and me, by the time Patrick came out of the appointment, the three of us were chatting away quite merrily. And Patrick was quite shocked because that wasn't a thing that happened very often in London. And I think because I'm from such a small community here, we just chatter. It's also quite a Scottish thing, I think. So say hi to people. Do you know, help them with something, anything. Just interact, little interactions. Um, connections is what they're saying is join a group. Join a YouTube channel. <laughs> um, you know, join a group, whether it's a preppers group, a reading book group, a cooking group. Any sort of group, whether you want to go and be a volunteer for something, whether you want to, even if you um, want to start writing for pen pals or start writing to your MP or your senator or, you know, your local council, your local fire station, local, start writing to people. And I'm quite sure, you know, I really do want to get this Discord back up and running because we can start interacting there again. Um, so, yeah, that's that's my thing. Is Especially if, like me, you're getting that bit older. Um, let's keep these connections going. Because we don't have to be as lonely as we have been. Because the last few years, a lot of it's to do with the hangover from when there was lockdowns and pandemics and stuff. So let's pull ourselves out of that. Let's answer in the comments. Let's everyone say hello. Let's everyone just check in. See what state you're in. See what county you're in. See what country you're in. So that if you're in a, the same area as someone else, we can start interacting. Now, I'm not saying you should be passing personal details, but you can at least know there's somebody there. So if you're getting floods, are they getting floods? Are they okay? You can message them on here. So there you go. That's my thought for today. Catch you later.